Okay, in this video, we're going to go over how to find the area of a segment in a circle. Okay, so in order to do that, let's answer the following two questions. First of all, what is a sector and what is a segment? And you can see on this illustration that I have over here, the segment, well, actually, let's start with a sector. A sector is if I took out a piece of a circle, just like I was cutting a pie or cutting a pizza. Uh, a sector basically is very similar to an inscribed, or excuse me, a, a, a central angle. So for example, this particular sector has a degree of 80. It has a radius of three on both sides, okay? Now, the segment is this little portion up here. Wherever the um, sector intersects with the circumference, just connect those two and create a triangle. And this little portion left over is the segment. Okay, so the question is, how do we find the area of that little portion up here called the segment? It's pretty straightforward. I, I'm, I'm fond of saying, like in my other, in my class, that a difficult problem like this is really just a series of simple problems that have been stacked on top of one another. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to find the area of the sector first. Then we're going to subtract away this portion right here or the triangle. And what's going to be left over is the area of the segment. Okay, so let's break those down into three individual steps and see what we come up with. Now, let's focus first on the area of a sector. We know that the area of a complete circle is pi r squared, don't we? That's something you've learned in previous uh, videos. And we know, for example, here that our radius is 3, so 3 squared will give us 9 pi. Now, what I have here is theta over 360. This little zero with a, a line crossed through it is just another uh, name for an angle. 80 degrees of 360 will give you the proportion that's this sector, okay? So we're going to find the whole area, multiply it by the proportion that this is, and we should come up with our number, okay? So it's going to be 9 pi times 80 over 360. And when I put that into my calculator, I am going to get, let me just find my calculator. Here we go. And let's just do this. 9 times pi. Whoops, here we go. Let's try it again. 9 times pi. I don't know if you can see that. A little bit difficult. Okay. Times 80 and then divide that by 360. And you come up with 6.28 units squared, okay? 6.28 units squared. So again, remember, just find the area of the total circle, multiply it by the proportion that this would be, which is 80 over 360, multiply your numbers, and you'll get 6. 2, 8 units squared, because remember, we're looking at an area. Okay, now let's go to the triangle. Remember that the, we don't know that if, uh, we, we do know that this is an 80 degrees here, so this is not a right triangle, right? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to draw a line right down the middle and create two right triangles, Okay. There's my 40, if this, is, this was 80 degrees, I'm just going to cut it right in half and create a 40 degree triangle. This is my perpendicular, so that's 90, which leaves 50 here. And since both of these have the exact same dimensions, they are both exactly the same, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the area of one of those right triangles and then just multiply it by 2, all right? Find one of these, multiply it by two, I'll get the entire triangle. Now here's something else that's kind of interesting. If I were to take this triangle and then just flip it up to here, 
look what I've created. I've created a rectangular shape. And remember that the area of a rectangle is just length times width, okay? Which turns out to be what this is, base times height, because two, half of two is one, base times height, there it is. Same idea. Now, how do we find the area, or excuse me, the length of each of these sides? And this is where we have to use our trig knowledge, right? Remember Sokotoa will tell us what our uh, <clears throat> formulas are. If we were to go here, if we know the sine of 40 degrees, mm -hmm. so we're going to say opposite over the hypotenuse. Here's the hypotenuse. The opposite will be this side here, okay? So I'm going to say the sine 40 degrees will be equal to the opposite, which is what we're looking for, over the hypotenuse, which we know to be 3. Let's go ahead and solve this. The sine of 40 degrees, just enter sine into your calculator, put 40 degrees, and you get 0.623, okay? So 0.623. Will give me my side divided by 3, multiply both sides by 3, and I'm going to get, whoops, go back there, sorry, let's try that one more time, go back and delete that, and give my answer 1.93. So this side here is 1.93. 1 units. Now I need to find this side here. And again, a 40, if I use 40 degrees, it's going to be adjacent side over the hypotenuse, and that would be cosine, wouldn't it? So I'm going to say the cosine, 40 degrees, adjacent, over the hypotenuse, let's find the cosine, 40 degrees, I think you can see that, there we go, 0.766, so that's going to give me 0.766, multiply both sides by 3, Point two nine eight, which is be point two, uh, excuse me, two point two nine eight, which is two point three zero. Okay, two point three zero units. Now remember what I said. I can just pretend this is just like my little square or like a little rectangle. So I'm going to multiply one point nine three times two point three zero, or just put it into this formula. Either one will work. 4.44 will be the area of my triangle. 4.44 units squared. Okay, so now I'm just going to take the area of my sector, subtract the area of my triangle, and what I'll have left over is the area of the segment. So 6.28 units squared minus 4.44 units squared, and that's going to give me 6 point, let me just go ahead and do my calculation real quick, and that's going to give me 1.84 units, and remember since it's an area, it's squared, and there's the area of my segment. Okay, I hope that was helpful to you.